so uh, hi everyone. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizer for giving me the opportunity to, to present this work that I have been done. I have been working for a couple of years and it couldn't be uh, possible if I hadn't the uh, uh, contribution for uh, my collaborators, uh, Hector Monteiro, Jeremy Walls, uh, Garcia Rojas, etc. And I would like specifically thanks Morissette, who has a uh, very good experience in Python and helped me to uh, improve the, the code. So uh, before uh, talk about uh, this tool, I would like to say a few things, how the idea of that uh, code uh, came up. So uh, long slit spectroscopy is a traditional way, traditional technique to study uh, nebulae, but usually is biased by the position of the slit, uh, which we usually select based on the morphology of the nebula. This is a classical example, the Blind Eye Nebula NGC 009, 7009, which uh, here I show you the, the slit position from the spectroscopic study from Gonzalez 2003 along the major axis of the ellipsoidal cell covering the ANSYS or NOTS. And a uh, few years later, we have another uh, uh, spectro spectroscopic study from FAGLU, and they uh, decide to get a slit position at the same position angle. So the question is how different would be the, the spectra would be at different slit position, or how different would be the physical properties that we determine for different slit position, not, if, not only parallel, but in different position angles. Uh, and one way to do that, one way to map the entire uh, nebulae uh, is to cover, uh, to obtain spectra from different uh, parallel slit positions. So like in this example, but this is a very time consuming process and uh, it has been applied only to three planetary nebulae, as I know, NGC uh, here, you see the, the nebulae that have been uh, applied this uh, technique or CCD mapping spectroscopy uh, for a couple of more uh, planetary nebulae. Both techniques are, are very time consuming and you need uh, several hours of observations. So in over that problem, we have now uh, integral field spectroscopy, which provides a data set, an amazing data set uh, to uh, carry out a spectroscopic analysis in two spatial directions. Um, over the, the couple of years, several uh, different, more advanced uh, integral field units have been uh, generated with higher uh, uh, spec spatial resolution or spectral resolution and uh, uh, larger field of use proper for uh, planetary nebulae. Uh, as for planetary nebulae, only a handful of planetary nebulae have been studied, have been observed with integral field units so far. Here I list, I think, most of them. Uh, but the question is can we uh, compare the results for integral field units with uh, literature? Uh, this is not uh, one by one uh, a direct comparison. It's, it cannot be possible because most of the of the objects that have so far have been observed with uh, long slit spectroscopy because uh, models that we have, most of the models that we have are one D degraded models. Uh, another issue is that in the ionization corex factor that we have uh, have been. Uh, obtained with uh, long slit spectroscopy or 1D uh, models. And finally, emission lines diagnostic diagrams like BPD or the one from Sabadin uh, are also uh, constructed with uh, integrated spectra, not uh, uh, spaxel by spaxel like integral field units. So how do we compare integral field units with 1D spectra? Uh, and because of that, we came with the idea to construct, to make this uh, automatic uh, spectroscopic analysis tool for uh, integral field units. Uh, the current version of the code has four modules, rotation analysis, specific analysis, radial and 2D analysis. Each of these uh, modules uh, compute all the physical parameters, extinction, temperature, electron density, emission lines, abundances, ICFs, and for these measurements, we have implemented the PyNeb uh, Python catalog uh, package. So uh, more specifically, the rotational analysis module, the code computes 
perform a spectroscopic analysis for one pseudo slit that is defined based on its uh, width, length, and uh, position angle, but then rotates the pseudo slits from zero to 360. So we can get uh, a spectroscopic analysis, one D spectroscopic analysis for different position angles. And the code, code returns a plot of each nebular parameter as a function of position angle. This is an example from uh, NGC 7009, the sign verification data from WALS 2018. So you see the extinction is almost constant with position angle. The electron temperature from the sulfur three uh, lines is almost constant, but we see a, a variation when we get uh, determine the electron temperature for nitrogen two. Uh, and uh, I would like to point out this point that the lower value is obtained for a position angle close to 78, uh, de uh, position 78 degrees, which means that the previous studies got a, a electron temperature more uh, reasonable for plantain nebulae and not something extreme. Uh, this is uh, the ionic and total abundances of nitrogen with, as a function of position angle. So again, you can see that there are there is a variation of, of, the, of uh, abundances or ICFs. Uh, at this point, I have to say that we used uh, the temperature for sulfur three lines. So this is not an issue with a variation of electron temperature, and we have to study more. Okay, the radial analysis module in this way. In this module, the code computes uh, the line intensity of laxis in one specific pseudo slit starts from uh, uh, closer to the central star for one row of pixels, sum up all the line, the intensity, the fluxes from these five pixels, for example, performs a spectroscopic analysis, compute all the physical parameters, and then moves to the second column, the third column, the fourth column, etc. And then you can have uh, a plot of each nebular parameter as a function of the distance from the central star. Again, the width, the length, and position angle of the pseudo slit are free parameters in the mode, and the user can select uh, what he wants. Uh, at this point, I would like to mention: you can see in the in this panel, the the stellar extinction shows a sharp drop at 15 arc seconds, exactly after the end of the ellipsoidal structure. Uh, then we have uh, some uh, density increases in different positions. Uh, the red points, the red you've arrow. Gone over time, by the way, uh, sorry, Ross, I'm very generous, but you've gone over time. I think you need to uh, wrap up now. Okay, so uh, okay, I didn't. Okay, so uh, it also provides a line ratio, a line uh, radial distributions. The specific analysis is just for 10 different positions, so performs a general spectroscopic analysis. And the final module is the two-dimensional. Di for each pixel, we have a spectroscopic analysis, all the physical parameters, and the code returns maps of extinction, temperature, uh, electron densities, temperature, or uh, line ratios, like these examples, nitrogen uh, 2 over oxygen 3. And the most important thing is the diagnostic diagrams, because in the diagnostic diagrams, uh, the data from SPAC cells are overplotted with the radial uh, analysis, the radial analysis module, the pink points, and the specific uh, spe uh, slit position, the yellow uh, diamond. So you can see how is uh, the distribution of the line ratios in the nebula, even. Uh, by Spaxel or 1D integrated spectra. So I'm going to finish. Okay, uh, these are uh, the results uh, from uh, NGC 6778. As you can see, most of the parameters are constant with the uh, position angle. Again, we get uh, some variation in abundances and uh, abundances ratios. Okay, I don't have time. This is from radial mm -hmm. analysis. And uh, again, uh, images, uh, maps of uh, physical parameters. I'm going to stop here. Thank you for your time. And so thank you very much, Davros. I was a bit generous there, but uh, it was interesting. So I let you run on. But <laughs> I know. <laughs> to, okay. But to stop here. OK, so uh, we have a question, Tina. 
Intervient. Can't hear you. No, no sound coming through. Nope. Okay, while we're waiting, maybe Anna, would you like to ask your question while Tina gets yes, uh, yes. hand Yes, yes. Okay, uh, so very nice presentation. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, uh, to Stavros, right now your software select uh, regions, let's say, that are uh, geometrical somehow, a rectangle, a slit or a circle. Are you planning to integrate uh, your region selection with a software that uh, somehow detect irregular structures? I don't know, for example, Astrodendro or something like that. So you can extract, for example, the information of a given node or a given arc or something irregular in the nebula. Uh, yeah, thank you, Anna. It's a nice question. Uh, the, the first version is the simplest one with rectangular mm -hmm. uh, pseudo slits, let's say, that have mm -hmm. different position angles. So you can do that for specific nodes or uh, specific regions in planetary nebulae. But uh, yes, I have uh, the plan is to the second the second version to get uh, regions more irregular based on signal to noise ratio, for example. Ah, this this is very nice. Well. Yes, <laughs> I think it's gonna be more difficult than the regular yes <laughs> yes but, uh, it's a good idea yeah <laughs> thank you martin you have a quick one yes uh amazing software stavros i think it's going to be very useful uh do you think you can extend its capabilities to different kinematical components so when you are able to resolve two different components in velocity <laughs> yes uh, based on the data that you that I'm gonna use. Uh, for now, I used low resolution data from news or uh, demos, uh, but I it's a good idea. If I have a higher spectral resolution data, it can be. Yeah, it, it will be great, of course. But for the next uh, the next version, of course, and I have to say that. Satellite 2.0. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, any other questions? I can't see anyone else with their hand up. Uh, uh, Tina had problem with the microphone. She was asking yeah. whether the input was the reduced data cube, uh, Stavros. Uh, the input are uh, emission line maps that you extract from the data cubes. Okay. So the first step is to to create the emission line maps, and then the code get as an input the emission line maps not the code itself, the signal the data cube itself. It's gonna be, you need one step before that. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Well, we better get on to the next speaker now.